disaccharides, and there's three main types of disaccharides. Di meaning two, saccharides being sugar. So we're getting kind of bridging the gap between monomers and polymers here. So the first one is sucrose. This is table sugar, right? So sucrose is, at the most simplistic way of thinking about it, an alpha glucose plus a beta fructose. Uh, so this is the overview. It's a one to two alpha linkage. I'm going to use the Greek letter for that, alpha linkage. And what that means is the first and then the second carbon are linking each other together. And I uh, props to Kevin A. Hearn for giving me this structure here. Um, I don't like the structure that the book gives me because it is very confusing. It shows an inverted picture of it. So I'm going to draw the way that I, it should be drawn. So the first thing we're going to do is alpha glucose, right? So I'll do that. All right, so there's my alpha glucose right here. This is my O. That's going to be part of my O-glycosidic bond there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this right on top of him to that of beta fructose. And one of the things you may want to note about beta fructose is this is a furanose. This is the five-membered ring as opposed to with glucose, it's the six-membered ring. Now this is getting a little crowded here, but one of the things that you may want to take note of at least, and I'm not going to really make so much of a distinction between the two here, is that um, in this type of a, a linkage we have here, we it didn't really give details into the mechanism behind how this works, but glycosidic bonds, just like peptide bonds, are formed by dehydration synthesis. And that's what had happened here between these two hydroxyl groups of our reactive species here. So this top part here is the alpha glucopyranose, and then down here is the beta fructofuranose. Okay, so this is the six carbon, the six membered ring versus the five membered ring of each and every one of those. This is table sugar though, this is uh, very common. Next one, and I have no problem with the structure of it, is that of lactose. And at 30,000 feet, this consists of beta galactose. I didn't divulge into the structure of that too much. I didn't feel like it was superbly important. Um, we're combining that also, though, with an alpha glucose. This is going to be a 1 to 4 linkage. And I'm going to go ahead and draw just to kind of represent this in orientations of space. Not superbly stressing on the structure of galactose. But anyways, it's a very... To, to draw this, because we have to draw this as a beta galactose with the OH going up, and then this is going to have to connect to an alpha glucose with the OH going down. So it seems almost inevitable to, to draw these things on their, on their own. Okay, so this is a 1-4 language, and I don't think I had recalled numbering my carbons in either one of these. Um, so this was carbon number one, obviously. Um, in this context, it's carbon number two because of the R group here. I don't think that's superbly important. But with this, it's carbon number one from the galactose, and then carbon number four, so one, two, three, four, from the alpha glucose. And that's what determines this bond here. And uh, one of the things you may want to notice is that this is a... Yeah, some people can't digest this as you get older. Uh, your production of lactase decreases. And so if bacteria have to break that down for you, you don't want to deal with the byproducts of that. The next one, though, is maltose. And this is literally just an alpha glucose and an alpha glucose. There's a one to four linkage as well. It's a very common straight polymer forms are always going to be one four. And um, just assume, unless I say otherwise, that I'm talking about the D form of glucose as well. Not like my waifu, Talizora, but... All right, so this is my structure of my maltose, right? Two alpha glucoses right together, connected by a one to four linkage. Uh, just like to show you before, we have this is the first carbon here, and this is the fourth carbon here. Um, it's just some things we made to notice is that glycosidic bonds, bonds that link two sugars together, are formed by dehydration synthesis. And so therefore they're subject to hydrolysis as well. Other things that we may want to also say about these is if we were to look at the structures of these and understanding that the rings exist in equilibrium with uh, that of the aldehydes, we could also talk about, uh, this is kind of more or less the difference between the reactivity of aldehydes between the reactivity of those, 
but for sucrose, this is considered a non-reducing sugar because of the fructose that's being a part of that, um, whereas lactose is considered a reducing sugar because these are both going to give me free aldehyde forms. Um, for, for reasons that not fully explain, aldehydes are readily going to be reduced as opposed to ketones.